Good morning. <laughs> Let's move you up a little bit. It's probably not the most flattering angle, but good morning. I am vlogging today. I thought I would just take you along for a little bit of my week. It is Tuesday morning today and I'm just sitting down at my desk about to get some work done, um, but I thought I would say hi. Yeah, I've got quite a standard week this week so I felt like it would be easy to kind of vlog bits along the way and um, yeah just show you what I get up to. The weather has been so nice in the UK the last couple of weeks. We've had a lot of sunshine, a lot of hot weather, not very much rain at all. We are due some rain this week but I actually think the garden is kind of needs it at this point so it'll be okay but um as long as it doesn't stay for months on end a little bit of rain is okay um but yeah the weather has been just so lovely and it's really like brightened my mood overall and yeah it's been a really busy few weeks so i will in this vlog at some point sit down and we can have a catch up and talk through everything that's been going on recently just because i feel like life has just been busy and it's been a while since i filmed so i can catch you up on everything and yeah just have a productive week together hopefully so yeah, like I say, I've just sat down, caught up with my emails, and this is normally how I kind of start my day, is just catching up with everything, writing my to-do list for the day, and then um, just getting into it. So my first, I've got a few calls today. My first call is at 10.30 and it's 9.40 now. So there's a little bit of work that I wanna do before then. But I just need to make some breakfast because <laughs> I've not eaten anything. My toxic trait is that I literally roll out of bed, shower and then sit down at my desk. I cannot get up early and have a proper morning routine. I have tried to get myself into the habit of doing it so many times and just failed on like day two because I don't know how anyone gets up before like 8 a.m. like my brain does not compute that way I know I'm gonna have to do it at some point in the future when we have children but I just I yeah if I don't have to commute I'm not getting up before 8 so yeah I'm just gonna go make a bagel and a coffee which is like my routine dream breakfast I love that's like my ideal breakfast it's not very healthy but that's just what I like to eat so that's what we're going to do. The light, the light, where's the light? Hello, so it is a little bit later now. I'm just about to take my lunch break and yeah, had a busy morning, meetings, calls. I've got another call in just under an hour, which is quite a big one actually. I'm gonna see how that goes. Um, and then I've got another call at three. So I'm hoping I can get some work done in between. I find it really hard, like I've got some like content writing and stuff to do for work but I find it really hard when I only have like an hour gaps in between meetings to get in the mindset of writing and focusing but then I also find it hard if I have a whole free afternoon which is like I did yesterday like I feel like the time like sprawls out and then I start procrastinating and getting distracted by things so I don't get anything done then either so there's like I think there's a sweet spot of like a two hour window where it's long enough to be able to get into the creative like process and focus but there's like a hard deadline at the end of it where you need to finish by um and I think that is like my perfect way to work like creatively and I don't really have that today so we're gonna see how much we get done and I can only do my best that's what I'm telling myself I think I'm gonna go on a little walk so I might film some clips on my phone of that and some little b-roll clips and stuff and then I might show you the garden later as well because I have 
done quite a bit of work to that over the weekend just trying to get it looking nice and adding some flowers and some plants for the summertime so i might show you what that's looking like sorry my hair like pff, what is this um i look like the slick back hair ponytail thing just doesn't look good on my head face shape like it's just not i mean i haven't slicked it back it's I've just kind of pushed it back but like what what is it what what's happening here okay I need to fix my hair that's all that's going on really this is a sneak peek of our little living room upgrade <laughs> I will try and show you a full update in this vlog I mentioned it in previous videos but we wanted to do a little living room refresh this year and I think I'm pretty much complete there's always stuff there's always stuff I want to do and little things I want to change, but we've come a long way <laughs> since the beginning of the year. So I think for how far we've come, I'm pretty happy with how it is and I feel like I can show you now. I'm sorry if you can hear like a fly buzzing around. So I will hopefully show you like before and after clips in this vlog, but I'll be coming later. So yeah, let's do our lunch break. Hello, so it's five o'clock now. The day just really got away from me. That afternoon was, yeah, there was just a lot of things to sort out. But I am reasonably happy with the place that I got to. With everything, I had a good meeting. That meeting that I was talking about earlier went well. Um, I've just wolfed down a baby bell because I was starving and i'm gonna go to a spin class tonight it's really gloomy outside now it's been sunny all day but i was gonna show you the garden that updates that i've done um over the weekend and then i need to get changed get in some gym gear probably make a protein smoothie and then go to my spin class which is at 6 30 and it's like five ish now yeah that's the plan i think i won't be back here probably until like 7 38. let me show you the updates to the garden i'm gonna speak quietly because i think there's people outside and that's embarrassing if they hear me vlog so yes also excuse my messy kitchen but it is what it is let's come outside so over here we've got my pots and these are actually just pansies that are left over from the autumn that have really come back really well so i've just left these in here for now i'll probably replace them at some point but i think they look fine for the moment this is like the back garden back wall bed back fence <laughs> What am I trying to say? This is the little flower bed that we have in the back. So I've been making progress on this since we moved in. Um, plants are expensive, so it's definitely still a work in progress, but I planted some bulbs in the autumn um, and that's when I planted some more pansies in here. And yeah, these are, pansies are just doing really well, but my alliums have come up really nicely. Um, so those are looking really good. I love alliums because they kind of fade so they were a really bright purple like last week which you can see you can see with this one um, last week they all looked like that really bright purple shade and now they're kind of turning to like a green a green shade and then eventually they'll turn kind of like a grey blue shade I think if they're the same as the ones that my mum has. So yeah, I really like the kind of transitions that they go through and they last for a pretty long time over the summer. Like you can just leave them up um, and they just kind of change color and go with the season. So yeah, those are looking really good. I think that's a geranium there, that pink one. 
I bought that and I just planted that at the weekend in the middle of the pansies <laughs> um, just for a little bit of variety but I think I'm not sure if these pansies will last I don't know if they're pansies or violas or violas but um, I don't think they'll last the whole season so I'll probably have to replace them at some point with some other kind of colorful bedding plants but yeah these are hibiscus um hibiscus rose plants so these were actually here when we moved in these were the only two plants in this flower bed so these flower later on in the summer and then my other purchases at the weekend were these dahlias or dahlias i think the english way to say it is dahlia but i always say dahlia because of how it's written so i got this yellow one and then this one which was an orange color but it's looking a bit sad i might need to water this excited to see what they look like i think they should flower all summer as well and i think dahlias get quite big and bushy so yeah i'm gonna see if they kind of take over or not um so i've just spread them out quite a bit to start with and see how they do i also bought this climbing rose so the idea for this is that it will go up the back fence here and kind of climb all around hopefully here i might need to get another trellis or something but the idea is that this will just yeah do its thing it's that kind of salmony pink color i don't think it will flower this year it said online that they normally will flower start flowering in like their second year um but i just thought it'd be nice to get a rose in here because i think they look really pretty um, and they kind of do their own thing quite well as well you don't really need to do loads of maintenance on them once you kind of that once they're quite established so yeah and then we have another hibiscus rose plant here and then over here i planted a cosmos so that i think will grow quite I'm hoping will grow quite large and like fill out this space as well here so I just planted it on its own again and then here I can't remember what this one was it's from last year and um, but it has pretty pink flowers which are kind of all dying but they'll come back um it sort of flowers again and again um probably need to deadhead it a little bit I don't know but yeah my aim for this is I'm not really very knowledgeable in gardening but i just want lots of color i want it to feel like a little safe haven oh and this one i think this is just like if i can remember the name of it i'll put it on the screen but it's it kind of grows like a weed <laughs> um so yeah i have to cut this back quite a lot but it has these really really pretty purple flowers that just flower all through the summer so it's quite good for that but you just have to control it because <laughs> as you can see it kind of does really take over if you're not careful um but yeah i just kind of wing it with gardening i just go to the garden center pick out things that i like and then plant them and see what happens <laughs> i've learned some bits from my mum and dad because they're quite into their gardening but mostly i just wing it really and then i also bought this really cute hanging basket which has like petunias i think that's a geranium in there it's lots of like different pinks and purples and i really really love this i just think it brings so much life and color and yeah i need to be good with watering it because hanging baskets are really hard to keep alive so i'm gonna try and be on it with the watering of that i did weed and feed on the lawn yesterday so it's due to rain tonight so i'm not going to water it just because i think it's going to get a good watering anyway and hopefully then the weeds will kind of die off and new grass will grow in over the next couple of months and yeah we have got this really nice table and chairs set as well which we bought when we moved in um so if we get some good weather out here it will be really nice to sit out and like have barbecues or drinks or whatever i just want to create a really nice outdoor space for this house um so yeah that's kind of what it's looking like and that's a water bowl for merlin because <laughs> he loves like drinking water that he thinks isn't supposed to be for him <laughs> does anyone else's cats do that but yeah those are basically all of the garden updates i'm hoping that over the next couple of months it all kind of grows in together i'm gonna put some plant food down and yeah we'll just kind of see what happens hopefully it'll be a nice little colorful addition to the garden and just feel like very 
peaceful and homey and yeah that's kind of my aim with it um that's kind of my aim with the whole house really is just to be like a calming space even though Adam will laugh at me for saying that because I am so messy like I am just such a messy person like I just thrive in mess like I don't know what it is I can't like it doesn't bother me if I'm working amongst absolute chaos around me um in terms of like my space and stuff I just I can't be bothered to tidy up so yeah when I say calm and peaceful and cozy that doesn't necessarily mean clean and tidy <laughs> I mean it is clean like we're not dirty it's just like I'm just not a tidy person I never have been my whole life but yeah I would love to know if you guys are into gardening at all like I say I'm just kind of winging it and I really like the process of just like planting things and like seeing what happens so if you guys have any tips on what I should do outside or if there's anything that you would add I'd be interested to hear um, because yeah I just like learning things about the garden the other thing I wanted to show you was this new diffuser that I got so this is the Seychelles diffuser by the white company this smells incredible this was actually a Christmas present from my mum um, and I've been saving it until the summer because I knew it was going to be like a kind of tropical summery scent. But it's so fresh and coconutty and it really does just like smell like an expensive hotel by the beach in the Seychelles or like the Caribbean, somewhere like that. I really, really love this. It's like tropical but not overly sweet it's quite coconutty but it definitely has like the fruitiness to it as well i really really recommend either like going in store to smell this or just like trying um like trying it out in like a little candle or something to see if you like it but they do so many products in the seychelles scent and i've never had anything in it before and i really really love this and it scents like the whole room as well you know how i love the neon diffusers because i've spoken about those a few times and i've still got my neon diffuser in the downstairs toilet here um because there's still a little bit left but i bought that in like november time and it's still going oh no it was after christmas that i put it out so that's been going since january and it's now like the end of may but there's still like a good amount i think it will last till like september probably the scent is really strong on that as well but i just wanted to replace it with something a bit more seasonal the plan now is to get changed for the gym and then go to the gym and oh it's my first spin class back in probably over a month and i'm not looking forward to it i am kind of dreading it but yeah the first one back is always the hardest so i'm hoping <laughs> it will get easier after that but yes i will see you in a bit okay so the light here is very fluorescent but we're gonna work with it yeah i thought i would have a quick catch up with you guys because i realize it's been a long time since i filmed beforehand a couple months like properly like catching you up and stuff yeah it just feels weird when like you've been off youtube for a long time then you come back and you like act as if nothing's happened and it's like the next day so i thought i would fill you in on everything that's been going on in the last couple months yeah i've got like 10 minutes before i need to go into the gym so this car park is really busy tonight and i'm really hoping that people don't like keep driving in front of me as i say that a car is driving in front of me so yeah i think the last video that i did like a get ready with me like catch up video in i was telling you that we were going to krakow soon and that came and went <laughs> so we went to krakow in march and yeah it was a really really interesting trip i really recommend going to krakow actually if you want like a good city break weekend away um it was only like two three hour flight maybe and um it was really good for like i think we were there thursday till monday or something like that thursday till sunday thursday till monday something like that and it was like the perfect amount of time 
um, we didn't feel like rushed around doing things. There was loads and loads of history to see. So I actually booked it for Adam's 30th. It was like my present to him for his 30th. And yeah, that he's just really, really into historical, seeing historical sites and um, just history in general. So it's been on his bucket list for a long time because obviously there's a lot of World War II history in Krakow. So I wonder what's going on because it's all like women of a certain age that are driving around this car park. I feel like there's a show on at the Lowry. The Lowry Theatre is like where my gym is. So they have different shows on all the time and I feel like maybe there's a show where the audience is like middle-aged women. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So yes, as I was saying, Krakow has um, so much World War II history. Obviously the Holocaust happened like Schindler's um, museum and factory was based in Krakow. So there's a lot of history about that. Auschwitz is also only about an hour or so's drive away. So um, most people will kind of go there to visit Auschwitz. Yeah, so that's what we did and it was intense it was very intense um yeah it was it was a lot to be honest i feel like it's one of those things that everyone should go and see just because it's like your mind is blown as to how something like that could really exist when you go there it's just so mind-blowing that's the only word that i can think of to describe it we went to see that and we did like all the museum tour of it and we went to Birkenhau as well and like saw what's left of that and it was just it was really harrowing to be honest um but yeah I'm glad that we went because it really opened my eyes and like I see I mean you obviously know you learn about it in school and you know what happened in the holocaust and everything but it really like opened my eyes to like just how terrible this world can be sometimes recently we also watched the there's a new series um adaptation of the tattooist of auschwitz and we recently watched that and it was really interesting because you could kind of tell like where things were having been to the camp and done the tour and done the museum guide guided tour and everything and that was really really interesting to like watch that and be like oh i kind of know that that is like in one camp and then that bit is in the other camp and like I know it, I've stood where they're standing right now like I recognize that area so that is really weird but yeah I recommend watching that if you haven't um I really enjoyed it it was like a sky adaptation I think in the UK here and yeah it was really interesting sad just a good story so that was back in March and then I feel like since then it's just been like go 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 um like there was just a lot going on a lot has been happening at work so there's been a lot to like manage wow this lighting is really <laughs> not flattering whatsoever but yeah there's just been a lot to manage in terms of work and different things going on in my team and stuff like that and just there's been a lot of like my mental capacity has been going <laughs> into managing that stuff. So that was taking up quite a lot of my time. And then we went to Egypt in April. So a couple weeks ago, yeah, like a month ago now. Wow, time goes so quick. Um, yeah, we flew to Egypt. So that was like our big holiday. Um, so I feel like we've had so many trips for our 30th because Adam bought me like a trip to Paris for my 30th last June and then I bought him a trip to Krakow for his 30th in January as his present but then separately we decided that we would do um like a trip together like we would um kind of book a big trip to celebrate our 30ths because yeah we just decided this we decided this like two years ago so yeah we had we knew we had that already like planned in and and booked in but obviously we just decided to do the separate gifts separately which we didn't plan or anything 
together but yeah so this one was um like a all-inclusive holiday to Egypt but we also did a day in Cairo so we went to the pyramids for a day we saw Tutankhamun's like remains or like the um sarcophagus and coffin and things and they have his mask on display in the Egyptian museum so we did that seeing the pyramids was yeah mind-blowing again I mean not mind-blowing in the same way as Auschwitz but like incredible to see them in real life like standing there they've been there for like 4,000 years I wasn't really that interested in seeing the pyramids before we went to see them I was just kind of like take it or leave it but Adam being very into history was really keen that if we were gonna go all the way to Egypt and spend a lot of money on this holiday we should at least go and see Cairo um and see you know the pyramids while we're there because like who knows when we're gonna go back and I'm actually really glad that we did that and we took the time out to do that um and then the rest of the holiday was just super relaxing just like all inclusive eat as much as you want um and yeah it was really nice it was very very much needed I spent basically no time on social media i was just reading and swimming and sunbathing and snorkeling and yeah it was just like my dream holiday that is like my ideal holiday and i think also when you work full time you really come to appreciate rest and times when you're allowed to just switch off and not do anything and that is basically all I want my time off to be now and then when we came back it was like a week to go until my brother's wedding so my brother is now married I really really love his wife and um yeah they've been together for like eight years so she was pretty much like part of the family anyway but it's really really nice to obviously have her officially as part of the family and yeah it was just a really beautiful day they had like the first really sunny mid 20 degrees uh day of the year that weekend and it was just perfect for them like i feel like it was just like meant to be um it was such a beautiful venue they had an outdoor ceremony the sun was shining the lambs were bleating in the background it was like very like english countryside vibes and i just loved it um and it's so nice going to weddings now like not doing not like having to do your own wedding <laughs> because you can really like appreciate it and enjoy it and not feel like nervous to be there <laughs> not that i you know i loved our wedding but it's nerve-wracking being a bride so yes i'm just very grateful that we can just go and enjoy and we've got lots more weddings coming up this year now so so that is basically what's been going on i mean there's been other stuff thrown in like when we got back from egypt i had a sick bug for like four days which like wiped me out and like yeah just various things that have happened along the way that have meant that I just haven't picked up the camera and we haven't got any more big like trips coming up like where we're going abroad or anything this year so I'm excited just to be in a routine we have got like different trips for people's weddings and stuff but it's all within the UK so it'll only be like a couple of days at a time and stuff so I'm hoping that um I can just really kind of feel like I'm a bit more settled now because I feel like the last month to six weeks eight weeks or whatever was a bit up and down in terms of yeah just feeling like oh I need to pack a bag for this I need to pack a bag for that and I'm gonna go do my spin class but I will probably catch up with you again tomorrow or some point later good morning I mean afternoon it's definitely the afternoon now um I have been on calls <laughs> since 9 30 and it's now 1 p.m gone 1 p.m my brain hurts it was it was really one call from 10 till 1 it's like a training session on um like yeah work stuff <laughs> um social media ads if anyone's interesting if anyone's interested i've been doing that all morning obviously that's now my whole morning gone and I've been getting so many emails, so many Teams messages while I've been on that call. And now I have another call at 2 p.m. I have a quick break to like decompress and like 
switch off from three hours of straight screen time. I mean, we did get like five minute breaks and stuff in, but I just, <sighs> I find it really hard mentally to balance all that kind of stuff. And obviously that is now like a whole morning gone where I have not got any work done whatsoever. And also no one in my team has got any work done because we've all been on that call. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling a little bit stressed now. I don't know, does anyone have any tips on how to deal with that kind of stuff? Um, the only thing that I have figured out to make myself feel less stressed in times like this is to just say to myself, I can only do what I can do. I can literally only do so much and you know the job that i do is not life or death i am not a brain surgeon it is not going to really impact anything seriously if i don't reply to emails or don't act on teams messages for a few hours like it really isn't going to ruin the world people can wait and people are going to need to wait it's just when you get a lot of messages through I tend to feel like everything's urgent and I have a real issue like being able to like prioritize. I try my best to do that but I really find it hard and it's especially hard like I said yesterday like blocking out that time to like focus on being creative is really hard when you have days like this where I've now lost half a day so the training was good and it was really helpful, but it always comes at a cost of like not getting other stuff done. So it's it's really hard to find a balance with those things because obviously you want to progress and you want to learn new things and you want to advance like in your development and stuff. But sometimes it makes your week harder because you're then behind on everything. So yeah, I didn't mean to come on here and moan, but I feel like I just have. For a while but yeah i am i'm taking a quick lunch break because i just i need to not look at a screen or like not think about work for a little bit as i said i have another call at two um which i need to go to i need to listen in on i've got that too and then i don't have any more calls for the rest of the day so i can actually then reply to my emails and go through my inbox and stuff it's very hard to work within your allotted hours sometimes and I'm someone who really doesn't like to work long days I know some people will just be like yeah I just work 12 hour days and that's great because I'm so much more productive and stuff but I'm actually less productive if I was to work outside of my contracted hours all of that time because yeah I just I don't get stuff done because I'm too tired so I really try and log off by like 5 30 at the latest if i can like obviously sometimes it's not possible but i really try and avoid working later than that because i'm no good to anyone at that time i've been working for like eight hours straight by that point so you know there's only so much you can give in a day and at the end of the day i'm not paid to work past 5 pm so yeah and i'm really really lucky to work for an organization that is so like good in that respect they don't expect you to work past your working hours and there's no expectation to be like checking your emails outside of your working hours and stuff people are very respective res respecting of that um so i'm grateful for that because i know that isn't always the case in every organization but yeah just one of those things my word for 2024 when i was setting goals this year was balance and i feel like it's a constant struggle honestly to find balance in all areas of my life i don't know if anyone ever does um but i just having that word as like my word for the year is making it a you know i'm trying to like really make it a priority to get that balance in wherever i can so stopping work at 5 five thirty, five o'clock is one of those things um because at the end of the day if you are not feeling okay in yourself then you're no good to anyone it's better in the long run that i prioritize going to the gym tonight after work um i'm actually 
I'm gonna stop talking in a minute, but I'm actually going to a reformer Pilates class for the first time. I've never done one before tonight and I am nervous <laughs> because it's always nerve wracking going to a class for the first time, especially one that involves machines <laughs> that you might like not know how to set up or how to use and stuff. So that's gonna be interesting, but um, yeah, I'm gonna push myself out of my comfort zone and do it and see how we get on. Um, but yeah, I'm just about to eat some lunch. I have a little salad that I bought yesterday when I went to the shop. Um, so I'm gonna eat that and then, yeah, I'll show you actually, I'll show you what I got. Merlin is now gonna be upset because I'm gonna kick him off my lap. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know you just got comfortable. Merlin is quite a rare cat in that he wants to be on your lap at all times. Like his favorite days are when we are home all weekend, not doing anything, just sitting on the sofa and chilling because he will literally stay on our laps the entire day. It's all, that's all he wants to do every day um, or sunbathe outside, but it's pouring with rain today. So that's not gonna happen. So this is what we are having for lunch. I went to M&S last night and I picked up this nutty super whole food salad this is so good if you like kind of like hummus nuts um it's got a really nice kind of like soy dressing which just makes it um and it's like mixed with like loads of greens and stuff this is a really good one and it's quite filling as well for a salad that's the thing about salads is they just never fill me up so i always want to have something more substantial but with this one it is actually pretty filling and then I bought these, I think these are, new. well, yeah, it says new, um, but I've never seen these before. Tricolore stuffed olives. They are breaded halkadiki olives, deep fried and stuffed with jalapeno, garlic and pimento. This sounds right up my street. I am gonna heat them up. I tried one yesterday cold and it wasn't that good because they're like breaded. So I feel like they're gonna really come into their own if you put them in the oven. So I'm gonna try a few of these and my salad and that's going to be my lunch for today hello it is a little bit later now uh it is what's the time 3 25 so i meetings are done thankfully i joined that meeting at two and then they were like oh yeah we don't have any updates so it ended at like 205 so that was actually perfect um because it meant that i could get on with some stuff so I have been doing a little bit of work and I need to do some more, obviously. Um, I'm just gonna look at my to-do list for today. Okay, so there's two things I really need to do before I log off today, um, like two like real tasks. And then I just want to go through all my emails and make sure i've like responded or made a note of any actions that i need to take um so i've got like an hour and a half now until the end of the day so i'm going to try and do those three things i really like i always talk about grace beverly <laughs> in my vlogs um but i really like grace beverly's like productivity planner tip of um like choosing three non-negotiables and she does it so she has like three non-negotiables for each day so it's like by the end of the day if you've done nothing else you've at least accomplished those three things and i find that a really easy way to like split my to-do list out so i tend to like do that she also has like quick ticks and like longer term things longer projects or whatever the thing that i find the most useful is the three non-negotiables so what i tend to do is like pick three things that I need to do and then kind of divide that out. So now I'm like, okay, the next hour and a half, I just have three things I wanna finish doing, but it might be that I get those three things done in the first hour of the day. So then I'll pick another three things that I wanna do. So I kind of divide out my to-do list in that way so that it is more bite-sized and feels much more achievable than having like 20 things, which is my full to-do list. And I'm looking at it now and I'm like, whoa. But I just like highlight the top three things, move them to the top of the list. And then I'm like, right, I can do that by the end of the day. And that is the way that I find I can be the most productive um, because otherwise it just gets really overwhelming. And you're like, I've got so many things to do. I'm never gonna get it all done. and yeah, it's really hard.
Hello, it is officially after work, 5.05 p.m. and I'm like, see ya. I actually managed to get everything I needed to do done, so I'm pleased with that. Responded to all the emails I needed to, so I really didn't need to panic earlier <laughs> as much as I was. Um, so that's a good lesson for me is like, things are never quite as bad as they seem. I am going to, like I said, go and tidy up the house a little bit so it's not complete bonsite for when Adam comes home. To be fair, it's not that bad. Like, like I said, I live in chaos. If you could see this room right now, it's really bad. It's really bad. I haven't, I just chuck everything everywhere and I haven't cleaned it since before we went to Egypt. So it's looking really bad. Like it's very bombsite-y right now because when I unpack, I just like, and if I don't know where to put something in the moment, I'm just like, oh, that will go in the spare room. And the spare room becomes a dumping ground and then I have to work in this room and it's just a nightmare. It's not actually too bad. It's mainly like packages because I've been trying to find wedding guest dresses for all the weddings that we're attending this year. So I've been ordering loads of stuff and then needing to send a load of stuff back. Um, so there's a lot of like packages I need to pack up and send back. And then there's just like stuff from all the traveling that we've been doing as well um, that I need to properly put away in their like permanent homes but they've just been dumped in this room for now. So that's not a job for this evening. <laughs> I will do that at a later date but I am gonna just go and yeah, unload the dishwasher, tidy up the kitchen a little bit so it's looking a little bit nicer. <gasps> oh no. Oh, that's so annoying. I was supposed to get stuff out of the freezer to cook tonight. I'm gonna have a look in the freezer and see if I can get anything out that can be like cooked this evening. Cause otherwise I don't know what to make for dinner. And then, yeah, go to the gym, pick up my package from next. I think that's everything. So let's do it. Uh oh. Someone has realized it's five o'clock and it's time for me to get up and spend time with you, isn't it? He seriously knows the clock. Like he knows when it's the end of the work day. <laughs> Don't you? He's like, what is this camera thing? He really doesn't like the camera for some reason. Hello, it is a few days later now. So I'm just popping in here because I filmed the kind of tour, living room tour situation and I didn't intro it. So I'm just saying that I'm gonna uh, show that now. And I also took some before clips of what the living room looked before. So I will insert those now so you can see it before and then I'll talk through the changes that we've done and you can see the, the new kind of furniture and everything that we've put in here. So you will see that beforehand we had a large kind of L-shaped sofa that was like a dark gray color. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was probably like six-ish years old and it was definitely kind of, you could tell it was an old sofa in that um, it was just kind of creaking a little bit when we sat on it, but it was perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It was just purely that we didn't like it in the space. It didn't really fit the space of our new living room, just with the placement of everything. Um, and I just wanted to make the room feel brighter and lighter. And you'll see 
from the kind of new sofas that we got um that was really the vibe that i'm going for you can see here this kind of um very light airy kind of tone is definitely what i've gone for more and it's just like more our vibe we got that sofa the old sofa when we first moved into our original flat and like we didn't really know what color we wanted we just sort of went for something neutral and it was like the first big piece of furniture we bought so it definitely served its purpose it served us so well but yeah other than that we have the tv in a completely different spot before which you will see and just in general i felt like the whole layout of the room felt very enclosed it didn't really make full use of the space of the room because the room itself is actually quite large um but i you know i didn't want to do any redecorating i'm happy with having white walls for the moment maybe in the future we will paint this room but for now like i was happy with everything in terms of decorating it was really just that i wanted to freshen up the space make it feel lighter make it feel airy and just make it feel like a really comfortable calming space to come and sit in um because we do spend the majority of our time when we're in the house in our free time in the living room so yeah i will pop in the clip of me giving you the tour now and you can see that this is the new living room situation i will kind of tell you where everything's from but we haven't actually bought loads of new stuff. Um, the main new things are, is the furniture and the cushions. There are definitely things that I still wanna change, but um, I don't know when I'll get around to them. So I thought I'd better show you guys now. So these sofas are actually from m and They were doing like a Christmas sale. So we got the sofa and then we got the chair as well and if you bought like two pieces of furniture you saved like 20 percent or whatever it was we were umming and ahhing a lot over the fabric because obviously this is a really light fabric and will show up stains a lot but the previous sofa that we had was so dark and i really didn't like the color i just felt it made the room really dark and because the carpet is like a really cool gray i wanted something that was going to warm the room up but still feel light and airy so we did go for the lightest fabric sample that we got in the end it's kind of like this linen it's like a nice linen material and it's really comfortable so nice definitely worth the money and um these actually are detached so um the armrests are just like cushions that you can take on and off i am really happy that we went for this fabric in the end because i just think it looks so nice and it hasn't really stained it does get merlin's black cat hairs all over it it's fine if you just kind of keep it keep hoovering it keep using the lint roller on it it's okay so then the cushions i got from kind of like a variety of places so the striped cushions at the back are from etsy and then the kind of patterned one at the front here is from a shop i think it's called like the home edit or something i'll try and leave a link below and then the cushions the kind of block color velvet cushions here are from loaf and i just wanted to invest in cushions this time because i've bought cushions that are lower priced before and i just find that they don't last that well the fillings are quite like not very good quality and they kind of lose their shape and filling easily on this chair over here we have the same cushions from before plus this little oblong one here is from the cotswold company it is so nice it's kind of like the indian block print style and it's sort of like a like a neutral mustard shade i really really like it um it goes with the other cushions really nicely as well and then this faux fur blanket I, we've actually had for like two or three years it's from john lewis and that was an investment one year that i made and no regrets it's the most soft comfortable blanket ever and it washes so well so then we also have a couple of these little footstools here i was going to get like a large footstool but they're so expensive and i was like i don't know if it's going to make the space just feel really cluttered 
So I got these from Amazon actually. They were just about 30 pounds each and then me and Adam have one each and we can obviously move them around the room if we want or if we've got guests coming over, they can serve as little stools for people to sit on as well. And then over here, we've got this plant which I've had for ages. It was a gift from my friend, um, one birthday. We've just got this print here, which I actually had up in the bathroom. I just get all my prints from Decenio online. They're not like expensive at all, but I just thought this kind of, it's kind of like a sage green and it's just nice and calming. And then this, I'm really happy with this little table find. So again, sorry if you can hear the lawnmower outside. Again, we didn't want to get a coffee table for the same reason. So I've gone with like side tables and things next to the sofas, which we actually already had anyway. Um, but instead of a coffee table, I wanted something to put candles on. This little rattan table is such good quality. It's from the John Lewis Any Day range. I think I got it for 80 pounds, something like that. And it's really good quality. The wood is so nice. You can just tell that it's gonna last years and years and it's sort of timeless as well i know the rattan is quite in and trendy at the moment but i think generally the style of table will just kind of stand the test of time even if the rattan doesn't the rattan's only a small part of the table um and then yeah i just have been keeping fresh flowers on there or lighting candles on it so it means that we can kind of like see it when we're sitting on the sofa and yeah, it's just really nice instead of a coffee table that would, I feel like, take up this whole space. And these little stairs are for Merlin because he has arthritis, so um, he finds it hard jumping up onto the sofa now. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's it really. Those are all the kind of new additions. We were so lucky that like the shutters and stuff were already installed when we moved in because um, yeah, it just makes the house look really homey. I got those curtains ages ago from Next in our previous house actually, and also the ladder shelf. I mean, this plant is actually a fake bamboo plant that my mum got me when we first moved into our original, like first flat. And then that little Matisse print is also from Decenio. I didn't really know what to put there, but I just thought it needed something up there. And then, our ladder shelf, which I haven't styled yet, I'm gonna be honest. Like, it's kind of tucked away in the corner there, so I hardly see it, and then I forget about it, and then whenever I look at it, I'm like, oh, I need to style those shelves. <laughs> I would really love to get a new TV stand that's, like, wooden to go with the other furniture in the room, but I think for now, I can't really find one that I love, and for now, this isn't really bothering me because it's kind of tucked away in the corner. Um, it kind of go, you know, it all blends in with the TV anyway. We were really lucky because Adam's mum and dad were getting rid of this and a few years ago and, and we, we just took it off their hands. Yeah, I'm not in a rush to replace that again because good quality wooden TV stands are like upwards of 500 pounds. By the chair, I did buy this little Ikea floor lamp. So this is really nice. It's like a gold base. The lampshade is unfortunately quite see-through let me show you when it's on so you can kind of see the frame within the lampshade really easily and i think it's just because it's a cheap ikea shade so i think i'm going to replace this with just like a nice linen look white lampshade um but it's fine for now um and then yeah these little shelves i just styled with some stuff that i already had lying around we do have this big plug which is obviously meant for the tv to go on the wall there but we did actually have the sofa the previous sofa that was an l shape kind of against this wall and the tv was where this socket is but it just didn't feel right when when we got these new sofas we originally had them on that wall and the um chair was in the corner over there but it just the feng shui just fell off the room felt really close and like the first thing you were hit with as you walk in the room was like the sofa there and then the tv was on this wall and it just didn't feel right so um we do want to get this kind of put down <laughs> under there for now it's fine again it's something that i don't really notice until i'm kind of like showing people the room and then i'm like oh we should really do something about that it doesn't look great but yeah logistically i think this is a way better layout for the room it just feels so much more open when you walk in and yeah i'm really happy with how it's all come together so overall um we didn't like 
do new carpets or like decorate or anything in that sense so it hasn't been like a full refurb but it definitely feels like a brand new room and I'm so happy with how it's turned out so yeah I hope you guys like it I know it's a little bit different for my channel to show you like home stuff but it's just what I've been spending my weeks doing so yeah, that is everything. I'm gonna sign off this vlog here now. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was quite a long one, so I appreciate you staying until the end if you're still here. Yeah, I really hope that you are all doing well and are having a lovely week or weekend wherever you are. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.